Welcome to A Level History at Steve the SJP. A Level History is taught by myself, Miss Harris, and Mrs. Gallagher Hay, and we both teach our particular specialisms, which gives two different aspects of history across the A Level course. So we'll talk more about that in a moment. A Level History is um, the skills that people that you would gain from A Level History are hugely valued by universities and employers. The level of, of skill that you're using to rigorously use evidence to create balanced judgments, to develop your written and your verbal argument skills, to analyse issues from multiple different perspectives, those are skills which are really highly valued and also the independent research, which is the coursework part of the course as well, is really valued by universities because you're already developing university level skills. The course that we do here at DBSJP um, is AQA where we have to pick, there are, there are three components, and we choose two examination studies. So you'll study each component for two years and then you're examined at the end of year 13 um, on each component. So component one, the breadth study, so looking at a long period of time, looking at themes across time, that's um, on the Tudors, and the final exam is 40%. The second uh, component is the depth study, so that's looking at a shorter period but in more depth and detail, and that's on the Cold War. And then the final component is the coursework, which is one essay. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but that's worth 20% of the final A-level grade. Looking at each of those components then, one at a time. The breadth study on the Tudors looks at England's most famous family. You might have studied them before lower down the school, but of course the level of detail at A level is much, much greater and you're analysing much more complex issues. So looking at Henry VII, VIII, Edward VI, Mary and Elizabeth, but tracing themes throughout the five reigns. And these are our six themes that you trace through. How effectively did the Tudors restore and develop the powers of the monarchy? So looking at the role of the king or queen, whether they became more or less powerful. The way that England was governed, how that changed over time. Relations with foreign powers, so looking at war and peace, periods of, obviously, periods of both. Um, how did society and economy change? That's looking at the average people. Did their lives get better or worse? Did England get richer or poorer? How far did intellectual and religious ideas change? So there's a huge amount of change in religious ideas in the period. Lots of that instigated by Henry VIII's break with Rome, which is a huge study um, as part of the Year 12 course. How important was the role of key individuals and groups? So we look at characters like uh, Thomas Wolsey, Thomas Cromwell, Anne Boleyn, um, and other fascinating characters and how they might have influenced or changed the course of history. Second component is our uh, depth study, which is on the Cold War. Miss Skyga Hay teaches the Tudor side. She has a master's in Reformation history, so that really suits her specialism. As a history and politics graduate, this is very much my specialism and my area of interest. So we look at the development of the Cold War and its origins, different the ups and downs through the journey of the Cold War, and then why and how the Cold War came to an end. So breadth study, you look at themes throughout. Depth study is, is about chronological chunks. So we, we just chunk up the Cold War into blocks. We look at the origins first, where did it come from, why did it start, how the Cold War widens from Europe to across the world, into the global Cold War, confrontation and cooperation, so the Cuban Missile Crisis being a real crunch point in the Cold War, and how that led to a little bit more cooperation between superpowers. Into the Brezhnev area, which is like a refreshing of conflict, and then how and why the Cold War ended. Again, those will be studied throughout the two years from year 12 through year 13. And then component three, 20% is your coursework. But this piece of coursework is really in depth and has a lot of stipulations um, on what you need to focus on or the type of thing you need, you need to be writing. It needs to be an interpretation study, so you can pick any topic if you want to in history, but you have to have a topic which has two differing interpretations, and you have to find your own contemporary and modern source evidence to analyse those interpretations. So it's a genuine piece of independent research. 
Here's a couple of examples of the types of questions. It's just one question, about four and a half thousand words. A couple of examples of the type of question that students that we've worked with in the past have chosen. It has to cover a 100 year period. It cannot duplicate anything from the Tudors or Cold War. It needs to be a different topic. Um, something which is subject to historical interpretation, so two different versions of the same events, and you've got to use your source evidence. So three components over two years. If any of you have any questions about it and you'd like to talk to us a bit more, then you know where we are in school and we'll always be happy to give you any more advice if you like it.